on, on, and on. Welcome to Stop the Idiot. This is our pro wrestling Q&A, or, or ask us anything. It's not always pro wrestling, but it's mostly pro wrestling uh, Q&A show. I am the idiot, a.k.a. the huge one, Dave Coco from cocosports.com or kocosports.net. It takes you to the same place. It's where the world comes to kick ass. And above all, where it's okay to be a passionate fan. I think I forgot one of the slogans. Oh, well, not too bad for government work. Let's go on. All right. I'm going to try to answer as many questions as we can. Um, the first couple are going to just be from everyone. Um, our social media blew up with like four or five questions. So we'll just get that. So just credit the internet for the first four or five questions because my Twitter, my social, my MySpace, I don't, I haven't checked MySpace in years. My uh, fucking caveman. Moving on. Bad joke. Messing up the first joke of the show, 10-yard penalty, please start over. All right, so these questions are from the Internet. Dear Mr. Internet, let's see what happens. Why isn't Dolph Ziggler main eventing? And I put a link in the doobly-doo that will lead you to a video of Ring Rust Radio. And I, I guess these guys are real radio hosts because, you know, once again, I, I wish media didn't go after guests just to have a guest on to try to build off their fame because it's really a waste of time and you're like wow Dolph Ziggler's gonna be on Ring Rust Radio oh man fucking uh Rock's cousin is gonna be on fucking a Open and Anthony Jr. oh man I, I can't wait to hear what they say and they never have any follow-up questions when they ask the host to question, they fucking stumble upon it. it. It's just, I would rather not have a guest. Just fucking talk shit. If you're gonna have a guest, at least have the responsibility to have follow-up questions. And, and when the guest asks you something, at least know enough to fucking respond. Well, in this short clip, Dolph Ziggler asked them, well, you know, basically, I'm paraphrasing here, why am I an inventor? Go ahead, I could take it. And they're like, uh, uh, we, we, we never, we never knew we had to be honest to someone that's famous. Uh, uh, we just have you on so that we can, you know, um, ah, uh, ah, uh, and pff, Ring Rust, oh, the robots that fucking do it. And, you know, Ring Rust might be a great show. I'm just picking on them because if you're gonna have guests, no rule, no rule. If you have any celebrity, any person as a guest, you at least need two follow-up questions or you're really not interviewing them. Be like, Roman Reigns, what do you think of the internet? They're fucking idiots. Okay, check. Number two, what do you think? No, have at least, at least a minimum. If it's going to be a five-minute interview, a minimum of two follow-up questions. And if they ask you, give an honest answer. Just give an honest answer. Dolph Ziggler, you went to Real Radio. You went to another podcaster. You know what? I'm going to answer your question. How do you, why aren't you a main eventer? Easily. Easily. You have honor. Respect. You want to be a good pro wrestler. Uh -uh. That's the problem. All right? Let's 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 fix this, Dolph Ziggler. First off, first off, take steroids. A lot of steroids. I don't know if you're taking steroids now. Just fucking start taking them. Granted, you will probably die, and the last 10 years of your life will be miserable, and your sex drive might go down. Not because steroids are bad, because you got to abuse them. Don't even use them a little bit to recover. Abuse them. Just be like, look at me. I'm taking years off my life, and my ring ability has gone down. Step one, how to become a main eventer. Step two, ass kiss. You say stuff like, yo, I'm a good wrestler. Uh, uh, no, no, that's not what you say. You don't say stuff like, I can cut good pro. What are you thinking? Uh, uh, you show up earlier than John Cena. Matter of fact, sleep at the fucking arena. Just follow Vince McMahon around. And don't ever mention you're a good wrestler, superstar, entertainer, stand-up comedian. Yeah, just stand behind him and go, well, sir, your suit looks tight. Mother... Freaking, I, I, I had to say to myself, because I'm about to talk about the Flintstones. John 
Flintstone, or what was it? No, it was John Cena Stone. John Cena Stone was even an ass kisser. You need to just kiss ass. Stuff like, wow, I had a great match. Ah, ah. Take that out of your vocabulary, Ziggler, and be like, Vince, that's a great tie. You're looking great today. Hey, how's the coke and steroids treating you? Wonderful, right? <laughs> I started taking steroids too. It feels fucking great, doesn't it? <laughs> Drug policy, get it? <laughs> All right, then make sure you bully everyone beneath you. Everyone. Dude, poop in diva's bags. Break black guy's arms and then laugh about it. Just do whatever it takes to be a bully. Beat up cameramen. Make fun of minorities. Whatever it takes, Dolph Ziggler. We're getting you to the main event, baby. So there you go. And bully. And then once you keep bullying people, know what you do, Dolph Ziggler, next? You go and do be a star. You just go and you're like, I don't like bullies. I was bullied as a kid. But make sure that you at least beat up four cameramen. Four cameramen and make sure that everyone knows you're a racist. That That's going to help you. Then, right, stop selling. You have honor. You believe you're a good pro wrestler. Get that out of your system. Steroids, stop selling, bullying, and make sure you use women. Just date them and leave them. It doesn't matter. If you can trade up, trade up. Do whatever you have to do. Date as many women as you can and just use them and leave them. And the best part is at the end of the day, you either wind up with the boss's daughter or you wind up with a plastic Barbie doll that's like, <laughs> will you marry me on reality TV? It's genius. So make sure to bully. Make sure. Now, this is the most important part. All right. There's a long list of what you got to do to main event Dolph, Dolph Ziggler. This is the most important part. You want to main event in WWE, you have to be a horrible human being down to your fucking core you have to make sure anytime you do anything good there's a camera around you're like wow i gave a homeless guy a hamburger don't give him a hamburger until the media is surrounded you don't <clears throat> and this helps this helps just lie about the demographics be like but but not only lie about the demographics first off say how much you love pro wrestling but Become worse at it. Do not be like, I've always wanted to be a pro wrestler when I was a kid. I wanted this my whole life. I appreciate the fans. I love the fans. That's what you say. But before you even take a breath, be like, yeah, um, and just make up the most ridiculous demographics that are just not true. Be like, I'm number one with toddlers. And then insult every single fucking fan possible make sure you get them all be like do you have an internet connection do you read books can you touch your toes you're a fucking smart whatever it takes just insult them and it goes like this if they say you're great like if someone comes up to you like ring rust radio and they're like you're great you just say wow you're a smart guy don't ask them any questions because they ain't gonna fucking know an answer okay don't just go on it and just be like yeah you guys sure are smart i am great and then if one person on the internet says something it, it could be on reddit it could be on twitter blame the masses blame everyone the and and then act like that it's only for a fake demographic, all right? John Cena already has eight-year-olds. By the way, the John Cena challenge still stands. If more eight-year-olds are at WrestleMania or more eight-year-olds are watch Raw, I will allow John Cena to legally punch me in the face when he comes to Tokyo. If not, he has to do a week of charity with no cameras in Japan. John Cena, the challenge is still out. Now... Now, make sure that you, when you do charity, you got to have a camera around you at all times. You have to make fun of pro wrestling fans. And do just say the internet. You did a great job. You said that this is, this is, this is main event material. When you said this on the show, on the clip, you're like, well, you know, first off, you said, why am I main eventing? And, and it blew up the brain. They're like, what? This ain't in the ass kissing computer. <laughs> But when you said, when you said, oh, well, people on the internet say I can't cut promos, that's good. More of that. No matter what. Like, even if it doesn't exist, even if no one even said it, 
just fucking do it. Blame the IWC. Matter of fact, just say thanks. Hashtag thanks IWC. Like if you walk to the ring and you trip, be like, thanks IWC. You're not like the fucking smart fans that suck me off. You have to make sure that you insult anyone that's a pro wrestling fan. But in the same breath, you have to say how you grew up and you were always a pro wrestling fan and loved the business. It's very important to be full of shit at the highest level. That's what you're going to do to be a main eventer, all right? Now, listen, listen, you also have another thing going for you. I don't know what your mom and dad does. That's okay. Just lie. Um, you can I say Mean Gene Oakland's your dad. Pff, that's getting you at least semi-main event on WWE, main, on WWE WrestleMania. So um, say Mean Gene. Maybe say Jimmy the Fly, Jimmy Superfly Snook is your dad. Just fucking make shit up. Who gives a shit? Fucking, it's not like fucking, if anyone calls you out on it, this is the beauty part of being a WWE main eventer, Ziggler. If someone goes, no, Jimmy, Jimmy Superfly Snook is not your father, be like, fuck you, you don't know anything, IWC. What the fuck? You don't know anything about our business. It's genius. It's a perfect shield. And the best part is there's so many fucking loyal WWE fans that are going to go, yeah, Ziggler, you're absolutely right. They don't know anything. They do have a cell phone. That cell phone has Wi-Fi. That cell phone has Wi-Fi. You're right. They know nothing. Um, so it's very important that's the route you go, Ziggler. I mean, your dad, <laughs> Jimmy, Fly, Jimmy Superfly Stucka, I mean, he's the original Money in the Bank winner. Bam! Plus 100, if anyone understands that reference. Bam! And, um, yeah. And then, you know, you slept with one of the original divas. Don't fucking admit that. Say she's your mother. Then your mother's a diva. Your father was in WWE's Hulkamania cartoons. It's it's amazing. That's how you main event. Stop wrestling good. Stop trying hard. Trop's trying to steal the show. Do move shitty and bully people and kiss ass. Use women. Be racist. And above all, make sure that you are clear about your demographics. Now, John Cena has eight-year-olds. Just go around and be like, I'm Dolph Ziggler. Pfft, you fucking don't know shit. I'm number one with toddlers. No one sells more bibs than me. And the best part is, that don't even have to be true. Because as soon as someone calls you out, I'm like, yeah, no, I don't think toddlers are watching Raw. Just like I don't think eight-year-olds are watching Raw. The best part about that, Ziggler, is you'd be like, you're part of the fucking internet. You're part of the fucking internet. What the fuck do you know? It's genius. Bam. There you go. No problem, Ziggler. Uh, I hope you're inventing. You know, granted, when you do all this, I'm going to fucking hate you because you'll become a horrible human being. But it doesn't matter. Just go on and be like, it's all about the money. You know, that's what faces and WWE fans talk about today. It's so funny because, like, back in the 80s and 70s when men were men and fucking milk was milk, People hated when people were like, well, I make the most money. <laughs> Not today. That shit is worshipped. So if, I can, if anyone calls you out on shit, just be like, I fucking make the most money. What are you going to do about it? All right. So there you go. I think that question was a bit longer than I thought it was going to be. All right. Next question. Here you go. Um, did you see wrestling isn't wrestling? And what are your thoughts on it? Now, we got this from a lot of people. I, I did watch it. I, I enjoyed it. I thought he did a great job. I thought he did it, told a great story. It's very entertaining. And the best part is just catching people in the background. I was like, did you see him? Wow. Um, and for those that don't know, Wrestling Isn't Wrestling is a very short film. It's done by a film director, um, son, famous film director, son, who's getting into film directing, and it's just about what makes pro wrestling great and why it isn't wrestling. And they tell a story of Triple H's career and Daniel Bryan, and they basically tell the story using women, and it's it's very entertaining. It's it's I think it's like 28 minutes. I put the link in there. But, yeah, I like it. Um, you know, some things I don't agree with, but, you know, he did a great job. One thing I do agree with, though, when pro wrestling, he, he mentions, and I, I said this before, and I'm paraphrasing here, when pro wrestling is done right, it's the best entertainment in the world. When pro wrestling is done right, it is the best entertainment in the world. And when it's done bad, it's um, Monday Night Raw. So there you go. But yeah, if, if you got 28, 30 minutes to spare, um, it's definitely worth checking out. I mean, Reddit, R squared circle, lost their shit over it. 
and um, everyone and their mother keeps sending me the link and saying, did you see it? Did you see it? Um, I think it's definitely worth watching. It's very entertaining, very original, and um, high-end stuff. So, yeah, um, I got this a lot. I got this question a lot, and I love Tommy Toehold. I, I can never, I can never, you know, I can never live up to Tommy Toehold. Tommy Toehold is the greatest cartoon human being YouTuber. It's just the greatest thing in the world, the greatest thing the human race has ever created. Forget fire, forget the internet, forget Golden Girls. The greatest thing that's ever been created is Tommy Toehold. And he does this thing where he, you know, he makes fun of the media. And I, I do that from time to time. I poke, I poke a stick at the bear. Um, but he says, like, how stupid questions are. One of his stupid questions were, which he has too much integrity. He has too much <laughs> journalistic integrity to answer it. And you know what? Good for you, Tommy Tohold. You're a cartoon with journalist integrity. I'm not. <laughs> and everyone and their mother answered, asked me this. Ronda Rousey versus a T-Rex in space, who wins? And I, I answered this in one of my eight-hour-long Raw reviews, but I'll, I'll answer this real quick. All right, first off, I don't know much about the T-Rex. I'm going off what I learned from cartoons, a couple science classes here and there, and a couple museums and documentaries. I am not a T-Rex expert. I want that to be known. But one advantage the T-Rex has is size, and it can eat Ronda Rousey. You know, tail of the tape. And not only that, but T-Rex has such short arms. You know, Ronda Rousey has to, like, get up there. You know what I mean? So, I think on planet Earth with oxygen, Ronda Rousey versus T-Rex. And I think Ronda Rousey is one of the most badass people on the planet. But it is a T-Rex. You know, and a T-Rex, I think, you know, if it has room... You know, Ronda Rousey's going to try to reach for his arm, but he's just tall. He's tall. It's fucking tall. I don't know how tall he is. I'm sure he's like six Ronda Rousey's high. And, fucking, you know, Ronda Rousey's not going to reach those tiny-ass arms. I mean, the T-Rex is perfect on planet Earth. But now, you changed the game, sir, by adding in space. Thank you, Tommy, to hold in 9,000 people on the Internet that sent me this. When you put it in space, Ronda Rousey is smart enough. Now, for the best of my knowledge... I think T Rex has never been in space. Best of my knowledge. I'm not gonna fucking you know fake the funk. That's for other shows. And I don't think he can live out in outer space because they need oxygen. Once again, these are big assumptions just from watching dinosaurs. You know, I, I read you know Danny the dinosaur 20 times to my kid today. So you know, I, I'm going with. It. I don't think T Rex can survive in space. And with the T Rex not surviving in space, I think Ronda Rousey. You know, she's famous enough. She's popular enough. NASA's hitting hard times. She definitely gets a space suit. And the T-Rex is out in space. Pff, even if the T-Rex is smart enough, you know, how, how's he, how he going to get a helmet that big? No. I say on Earth, the T-Rex wins. But once again, the question is, Ronda Rousey versus T-Rex in space? I give it to Ronda Rousey in space. I, I just, uh, I, you know, if I insulted the T-Rex community, I apologize. I have to come out of the closet and admit I am not a T-Rex expert, but there you go. All right, another question from the internet. Will RoboCop help Sting beat Triple H? Um, for those that don't know, RoboCop was one of the most awesome slash horrible um, storylines ever where RoboCop came out to save Sting at a WCW event. Um, I don't know if Sting versus Triple H is going to be that good at WrestleMania. I, You know, nostalgia will be there and all that. But uh, I don't. I will fucking shit my pants if Robot, RoboCop comes out. That's just me. That's just me. Now, when I put my money on it, when I go to the UK where you can bet on pro wrestling and say RoboCop will show up, no. Um, RoboCop was really slow in WCW. And it's been a bunch of years. I can't see RoboCop going fast. Maybe the new RoboCop, but then who the fuck watched the new RoboCop? Let's be honest. You have RoboCop come out and it's like, it's the new RoboCop. I'm going to be like, who? Who? Is that the Atom? What the fuck is going on? Who is that? Is that Iron Man? You change your suit? Iron Man, your suit's stupid. Um, I don't see the new Robo RoboCop coming. I don't see RoboCop coming at all, but I don't know if the WrestleMania crowd will know who RoboCop is. All right, now this shit's about to get personal. All right, we've got a lot of complaints from multiple hosts. And um, not, not multiple hosts, but from... Internet infantry about multiple hosts. 
And I think starting next week, we'll have to make a rule where it's only three hosts because a lot of people are like, we just want you, you and your friends. And, you know, some hosts you're willing to pay for them never to return. Um, all right, Internet Infantry, that's that's pretty harsh. Some of you really hate the other host. So um, we will try to back off the host at least that um, we'll try to make a new rule where it's only three hosts a day. But we've gotten a lot of complaints about certain hosts because we're trying to make the channel grow and we're trying to help smaller YouTubers and we're trying to make a community and all. But at the same time, you know, if someone's willing to PayPal me a hundred bucks, it's like, eh, I don't know. So um, I'm hoping that I'll be on more shows and I'm hoping that um, also we'll, I don't know if we're going to fire anyone. I mean, come on, they're good guys. Maybe we'll just won't have it. Because one complaint that we have is like when you have four or five hosts, you like go down the line and you're just like, no, we just want to hear fucking Coco and one other dude. So I appreciate the love. And some of you are really mean to the other hosts. They got failings. They got families. That man's got a family. I never thought I'd quote JR in a southern accent. That was horrible. Minus 100 for me. Maybe I should fucking pay 100 bucks fucking for me not to host the show. But, yeah, we will be solving the multiple host thing. We hear your loud complaints, and we're, we're, that's what we're rocking and rolling with. All right. Boom, 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 boom. Cody Keller. Coco Sports is the best part of waking up at 5.30 a.m. Woohoo! Take that, Folgers Coffee! Take that! Thank you for the kind word. Huge boss. Uh, Phoenix vs. Mil Mutos was the shit. We will be doing a Lucha Underground review, and we might have a special guest. We might. I don't want to say we do because, you know, I, I'm one of those guys that we do the show whenever we can do the show, and if I can't get the guest, people might, like, cry. So... We have a we have a guest penciled in. If he doesn't show up, it's just gonna be me. Uh, Trey Beeman, Dave, you're freaking hilarious. Laugh my fucking ass off. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the kind words. Live comments. All right, let's let's go to some saved comments. Those, those questions I just wanted to get out of the way because almost everyone and her mother sent them to us. Um, C at O C at uh, Asino Fly, O S C I N O underscore Fly. This is on Twitter. Um, win or loss with Taker, I think I it will. I think this will elevate Bray Wyatt because of the way he's performing on promos. Am I right or wrong? I think it depends who you ask. I think if uh, re you ask Wrestling Ranton, he'll be like, "Fuck yeah, he's Jake the Snake Part Seven. It's Jake the Snake 7.0. And, and I'm not making fun of Wrestling Ranton. I love him. We just have different views. Uh, this is just my opinion, the idiot. You're asking the idiot. I think fans that don't give a shit about wins and losses and titles and enjoy his promos, I don't think it affects them win or loss or tie. But for for me personally, I I don't give a fuck. I as soon as you uh, I know I know. Oh man, I just feel wrestling. Rant. I see. I I think wrestling ranted right now. I picture him because it's like early in the morning, uh, five thirty, where Cody lives. I picture Wrestle Ranton waking up in front of like 30 different beautiful women. I don't know. That's I imagine that's how Wrestle Ranton rolls. And he's like, what? What? Is he about to talk about Bray Wyatt? I, I just fucking lost all respect for Bray Wyatt after he lost to Cena. What the fuck's the point? Gives a shit. You know, all right, you're evil. And I don't like that style of wrestling. So in Bray Wyatt's defense, it's kind of like, but, you know, I seen it as, and I tell this story, I told this story before. It's like John Cena is the bully, and Bray Wyatt comes out and is like, yeah, I'm a badass, I'm going to fucking take the bully. And then you go, and you go, and it's like 6 o'clock, and you're like, oh man, I'm going to miss dinner, but I can't wait to see the bully get his ass whooped, I can't wait. And the bully just comes out and beats the fuck out of him. And then the next day, Bray's like, I'm going to kick, I'm like, fuck you, you got your ass kicked by the bully, shit the fuck down. Your, your time as king is over. Dude, can you imagine, let's say... Bray Wyatt beats John Cena. Nothing changes. Then you give John Cena 800 fucking victories in a row. Nothing changes. Then you have Undertaker coming off a loss. You have Bray Wyatt fucking 1 0 and beat, un and beat John Cena. And then he beat Undertaker. Dude, he's a fucking. He's the new Mr. WrestleMania. They passed the torch. But nope. John Cena's a piece of shit, and it's a lose-lose. Taker loses what? He's fucking a 
two losing streak, 0 oh and two, and then fucking finishes his career up against Sting. All right, that's what the fuck you're doing. That's that's what, all right, fucking that. Fucking Undertaker wins. All right, yeah. Fucking you can cut promos and you can fucking main event pay per views, but at the end of the day, you ain't doing shit, bitch. So um, I think for certain fans, especially that like the promos, the dark, the supernatural stuff, I think those fans are going to enjoy it. Me personally, I just don't like that style of pro wrestling. You know, I respect Undertaker. I respect Bray Wyatt. But, you know, if I can, Undertaker's on the screen, I still respect him. I'm just not entertained. It's not for me. Now some people like that style, so I don't. I don't want to take away your cookies. I'm just saying I don't like raisins in my cookies. All right, Zachary. Uh, I'll just call him Zachary because we got these from Facebook. And I don't know if he wants to use it. Question: Can anyone see Brock Lesnar with a WWE and UFC championship? I answered this in Facebook, but I'll also answer it online. I think Brock Lesnar can. A lot of MMA fans really hate Brock Lesnar, but what Brock Lesnar did was amazing. He beat Hall of Famer Randy Couture. He went from Beating someone in, you know, a small, a, a second tier, a second tier MMA company. He went from beating him, losing to Frank Mir, to shooting up to winning a title. That's amazing. It, it, it's so funny because, like, wrestling fans always get talked about being fickle and changing. Dude, wait to hear MMA fans. Fedor's the greatest. Oh, what? Dana White said he sucked? He's a can. He fought nobody. All right. All right. All right. Gotcha. Understood. So um, I think Brock Lesnar can – well, obviously he can win the WWE Championship. Could he win both? I I think he can. Obviously beating Kane is a way harder a way harder task in UFC than beating Kane in WWE. Um, and I don't think he can beat Kane, but I wouldn't be shocked. I mean the guy's fucking huge. He's a great wrestler, former UFC champion. Um, I know MMA experts like to fucking, you know, shit on him. And granted, you know, if he works on getting punched in the face, I, I don't know if you can, <laughs> all right. But yeah, if he gets better at defense and not being so afraid of strikes, you know, and granted when the ream is fucking striking you, you're like, you know, it's human nature. Like, get the fuck out of here. That's the ream. So, you know, no, no, no hey, player hating on Brock Lesnar here. But um, I think the biggest thing, is not Brock Lesnar's skills. I don't think it's the impossible task of beating Kane, UFC Kane. I think it's egos. I think WWE and Vince McMahon and Dana White have too big of egos and won't let it happen. So I think egos. I think Brock Lesnar has a small chance of doing it. I mean, it, you know, obviously if he had a match first Kane. Um, we're talking UFC Kane, Kane Black was. Um, if, if that happened, um, pe people would fucking be a huge underdog. But I could see an upset. I mean, it wouldn't be the biggest upset ever. It would be a huge shock. But huge shocks happen often in UFC. Look at the last pay-per-view. Um, so, yeah. So, um, I could see it happening, like, physically. Um, it would be a long shot. But I think egos would get in the way and it would never happen. Um, if, from, all right, we got this. All right, we'll answer this. Um, new Nintendo system, your thoughts. I, I love Nintendo. Um, I have a novel coming out soon about a little boy that will do anything for a Nintendo in the 80s. And um, I, I just grew up. I, I was a Nintendo guy. And I bought the Wii U for my kids. It was the biggest disappointment ever, ever. I, I've never been more disappointed with a system ever. Um, and I don't know if I'll buy the new system. I, I might last second if my kids really, really want it. But my kids only play 3DS and PSP and um, Mac games. They don't play if I can Wii U. Like uh, my friend, when it rains, my little boy, he'll bring in like four or five of his friends and they'll all be playing their 3DS and the Wii U will be collecting dust. So, um, yeah, I think they have to do something. Um, I was really, I really didn't like the GameCube. I didn't like the N64. I know I'm in a minority there. But, um, yeah, the Wii U was a huge, huge disappointment. Just so much they promised. So I probably won't buy it unless my kid's like, I want it. And then I'll be like, all right. But um, Nintendo's a fucking joke. Nintendo makes fucking WWE look smart. 
Um, Zachary from Facebook also says, um, your thoughts on the Briscoes maybe going to WWE? Who, who do you think the main guys in WWE after they leave? Uh, main guys, I guess he's talking about an ROH. Yeah. Um, yeah, as far as the Briscoes going, I never thought the Briscoes would ever go because, you know, what they tweet, what they say, the type of characters they are. But they really turned it around, and they, I could see them in WWE now. I mean, they always had the skill. They always had the entertainment, but it was like, oh, WWE likes fucking cookie cutters. WWE. So I would, I could really see the Briscoes taking off. Um, they would definitely have to sweep under the rug some of their social media stuff. But, yeah, and as far as Ring of Honor, um, I think Ring of Honor is just going to always be what Ring of Honor is. Uh, developmental league. If being a Ring of Honor fan, I'm a. I like Ring of Honor. I don't know if I'm a fan just because um, I stop watching it from time to time, but I do enjoy it. Um, but being a Ring of Honor fan is kind of like being a Devil Race fan. You know your team is awesome, but you know they're not lasting. You know they're going to go somewhere else. So um, I hope the Briscoes do good, and they need more tag teams. It would be very interesting. And I find the Briscoes to be very, very, very entertaining on every aspect of pro wrestling. Um, all right, let's see. Andy Paps, which five members of the TNA roster would you have former faction? Um, all right, TNA question. Um, which which five members? Uh, I don't know. I really like the Beatdown Clan. I really did. I fucking thought it was awesome. The storyline, the booking, Joe leaving, it broke my fucking heart. But I thought that was a good faction. Um, I don't know if people agree with me, but I thought it was a really good faction. Um, if it was me, oh man, let's go to TNA's roster. While I'm looking up TNA's roster, a lot of these guys are gone, but I would have a lot of the originals. You know, I, I would be like, hey, fucking AJ Styles, Christopher Daniels, and they would be going against it. Um, yeah, BDC. BDC is on the cover. How the fuck are you going to put them on the cover of your website and book them so goddamn bad? Um, I don't know. I don't think I know. Um, yeah, they don't have enough originals. I really do like the revolution. I mean, I like what James Storm's doing with them. Um, I don't know. I, I would probably have it where, like, it's really good in-ring workers, and then just try to have them eliminate WWE-type guys. Uh, maybe the Wolves, uh, low-key... Um, Austin Aries, but Austin Aries has lost a step. Um, Kenny King. So I would probably go about that and then just have them going. Because for those that had a $10 pay-per-views, they really missed out. But they missed out. I think they screwed up the beatdown plan. That's just me. TNA is very heartbreaking if you watched it from day one. Uh, who should the general manager of Impact Wrestling be? I don't think they should have one. But if they do have one... Uh, maybe Mike today use him for something. Uh, I'm just looking at the roster. I mean, EC3 could abuse his power, but I can't. I can't see him being a full time. I mean, you could have Jeremy Borash would be a feel good story for him. Uh, you know, Rockstar Spud. I just think no. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I mean, if you want a feel good story, Jeremy Borash. If you know. If not, maybe something about EC3. I think EC3 should be main eventing and should be the main heel in the company. And the way they're booking fucking BDC, it looks like that might come true. All right. Thank you for the questions, Andy Paps. Sorry I didn't have better answers. Uh, Still will please. What are the top ten matches that you'd love to see that would never happen or are impossible? All right. Top ten's a lot. Maybe we'll do that in a separate video. But um, I don't know. I don't know what matches. I mean, you have wrestlers who passed away. It would have been great to see Owen Hart versus a lot of those guys. Oh, here's one that I thought. Just just for storyline and hype reasons, uh, Stone Cold versus CM Punk. I just think it's such a perfect storyline. Two strong, independent wrestlers that fucking take no shit but have some, so much in di you know difference. Um, you know, if... It would be great if CM Punk came back and Stone Cold's last match was him. Or, you know, if they had it in their prime. But that's a match that I probably would have. As far as 10, man, I have to fucking really break that down. Because a lot, a lot of my wrestlers are on the indies. 
and a, a lot of all of my favorite wrestlers in the indies and pro rest and indies and pro rest they swap talent around a lot you know I, you know you, you could say like maybe WWE um, New Japan dream matches you know, uh, Ziggler versus a lot of people. Ziggler, you know, you can go AJ Styles, uh, Yamato, uh, Nakamura. So uh, Dolph Ziggler versus those guys, a healthy Daniel Bryan versus those guys. So, yeah, um, there you go. Maybe I'll have to actually think of a top ten list, but I'm punch drunk. Ask me top ten things. Like, what? I can give you one. <laughs> give me, like, ten minutes to fucking re-scramble my fucking eggs that I call a brain. Uh, Lennox Wooderson, what did TNA drop the ball with more? LA, AX, Motor City, Machine Guns, Beer Money, or America's Most Wanted? Uh, with, without a doubt, Motor City, Machine Guns. I mean, LAX, they, I mean, they dropped the ball in all of them, but America's Most Wanted is, they had their run. Beer Money had their run. So, even though they dropped the ball on them, it wasn't as bad. I, I loved America's Most Wanted uh, and Beer Money. Um, LAX, they really dropped the ball on. But no, the motor the Motor City uh, machine guns. I think if you had to choose out of those teams, who dropped the ball? They were just fucking amazing. I like they were so amazing. I bought I bought. I usually don't buy clothes. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy. I used to work in radio and shit, so I get free clothes. Um, I usually don't buy clothes. So like, if you see a shirt, most likely I fucking got it for free. Uh, thank you, Davy Richards. Um, but, you know, that's the shirt I'm wearing now. I don't know if, like, <laughs> I don't know if Davey Richards is the one who sent it to me, but I'd like to believe that. Uh, Motor City Machine Guns, without a doubt. I even bought a beanie, and then I lost it. I was so pissed because I, I, when I moved to Japan, I sold all my cars, and my beanie, I was in my car when I sold it. And I was like, motherfucker, Motor City Machine Guns. I, I still hope they come back anytime. Uh, they're one of my favorite tag teams, but, yeah, they were definitely one. Thank you for the great question. I am Mikey. Mike Ashford says, TNA talents have been able to work various other alternatives. Do you think House of Hardcore should be the feeder promotion to bring in new talent to Impact? Sure, why not? Anything, just to get new talent. I mean, because here's the thing. And I, I don't know, I wasn't really that impressed with House of Hardcore's younger guys. Um, a lot of people gave me flack in the comments saying, no, 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 they usually do better. And that's a possibility. I mean, it's hard to judge someone's career off one match that you saw, but... I, I wasn't impressed with a lot of the younger guys on House of Hardcore. Um, but yeah, anything that brings in new talent. Because when Dixie, this is one thing, and I bring this up all the time. One thing that pisses me off beyond belief when it comes to Dixie Carter is when she said this. She said, oh, we of course we have to get talent from WWE. Where else can we get it? And I never was more embarrassed and hated TNA or Dixie Carter than that fucking statement. But whatever it takes to get young guys in there. But TNA to me, when it comes to young guys, it's just, I don't even fucking like to even fantasy book that shit anymore. It's just not. Nah, the fuck, they ain't gonna sign them. They ain't gonna fucking treat them well. Um, I mean, best case scenario is Austin Aries. He's old as shit. And the Wolves. I mean, I'm trying to think who else. I mean, and I'm talking Dixie Carter. Um, you know, when Jarrett was running it, and it was the weekly pay per views, they. They tried and used a lot of stuff, even though they did miss out on CM Punk. Yeah, so. And maybe, you know, if you got Okada and Tanahashi, maybe you should call them by their names, not racist comments. That's what I'm saying, you know? I mean, maybe they just don't know. I mean, I've met people. You know, if you call someone, you don't know their name, and they're Japanese, don't call them JAP. And I'm not talking about Jersey All Pro. Just don't do that. It's fucking so degrading. Oh. Uh, Lennox Wooderson, if you were an independent wrestler, all right, where would you want to work outside of WWE the most? TNA, ROH, Lucha Underground, New Japan, NXT, New Japan. New Japan, they treat the wrestlers the best. They pay them the best. They're the most professional. And Lucha Underground, and um, well, TNA really, would, I mean, NXT really wouldn't be a independent, but I understand where, like, where you would want to go. I guess, yeah, because you're on your way to WWE. Um, I would New Japan. I would. I mean, I live in Tokyo, so maybe that's a little unfair because, you know, like, hey, fucking convenient. I'll just drive to work. Um, but with that said, I think New Japan takes care of their talent the best. I think they pay them the best. Just ask AJ Styles and all that. But you can work Ring of Honor. You can work Lucha Underground. You can work Pro Wrestling Gorilla. 
the only company you can't work for is TNA because New Japan is pissed because their athletes can't come in sober and you're a bunch of fucking racists. But past that, um, you, you can work at almost any company except TNA and WWE. And New Japan doesn't even give a shit if you work WWE. That's WWE saying no. So, I mean, with New Japan, a lot of options are open. And you got a lot more money and you're taken care of. And you'll be packing those stadiums. So, it, me personally, I pick New Japan. I mean, if you're all for money, you be like, I want to be a superstar. I want to be rich. And I heard being a pro wrestler makes you rich. It's a business, right? Of course it is. Um, yeah, then, you know, if it's all about money with you, then NXT and good luck. And not even, because, you know, New Japan, you probably get paid more. I mean, I, I remember I talked to him. I promised him. I promised this guy wouldn't ever use his name. But I interviewed an Intercontinental Champion before. And we were talking off air. I was like, hey, champ, why don't you buy me lunch? And he's like, no, I, I fucking, I'm poor as shit. I'm like, you're a WWE. You're a full-time WWE, and you're an Intercontinental Champion. And he's like, uh, Coco, i got to tell you something. How much do you make? And I was like, I'm a fat radio disc jockey, and I make blah, 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 blah money. He's like, yeah, you make triple more than I do. And I was like, that is the saddest fucking story I ever had, sir. And I was like, you know what? I would probably buy you lunch, but I'm not going to, because you might be an evil wrestler who's trying to work me. Buy your own fucking lunch, champ. Well, that was kind of a dick thing to say. Moving on. Uh, <laughs> I am Mikey. Mike Ashman says, Is it time that alternatives let go of egos and work together for the high pay per view market and online streaming services are on fire? Do you think that the top alternatives should work more together at a territory base, even if TNA has to work with GFW to make peace with broken relationships? Do you feel this uh, move will be win for the industry dealing with a monopoly destroying the business? This is a great question. And there's three answers one fan answer without a doubt without a doubt uh, yeah two the nah, hippie answer yeah you, if you if you fucking you know if you fucking you know if you work together split the money you can fucking tour do something great even if it's just like an nwa type gimmick you know, maybe that's what GFW will be eventually. I don't know. But, um, yeah, I think an NWA territory days is needed now more than ever. Not like NWA, like, hey, I have an Indian in front of 10 people, and I paid $700 to be part of the NWA. I'm in no, like, you know, real, like, you know, like Ring of Honor, Lucha Underground, um, Pro Wrestling Gorilla, New Japan. That level, you can get that level. Because the thing is, New Japan can benefit because a, people love the NWA in um, in Japan. And the second thing is, you go and even the NWA, like, just get the NWA, just make it one big company. Because that's what it kind of is anyway. I mean, if you're not working for NWA Texas and flying out to New Japan, are you really, really in the NWA? Oh God, here comes the NWA promoters emailing me. Um, yeah, so, um, I think it's a great idea if you can all work together. Now, negative Nelly reality business. Egos. Everyone thinks they're a genius. Everyone thinks their company's the best. Everyone thinks we don't need them. We can do this on their own. And negative reality, egotistical side of this three-way conversation is what always wins. What's always, always wins. All right. Boop, 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 boop. All right. Let's see if there's any live comments. And after that, we will wrap this bad boy up. I'm proud of myself. I answered a lot of these questions. Hopefully I didn't skip any. Oh, man. Someone's going to be pissed. All right. Uh, at the underscore Jan underscore Browers liked and tweeted our video. Much love. I appreciate it. You know what I love? He liked to tweet the video before we went even on air. Fuck yeah. Hell yeah. High fives. Everyone give him a high five. Go follow him on Twitter. All right. On to Facebook. Boom, boom, boom. Thank you for all liking my uh, my posts. I appreciate it. Uh, do, 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 do. That has nothing. Oh, fuck it. I'll answer it. Did I enjoy Flash? I, I enjoy Flash tremendously. I don't watch much television. But yeah, I, I really, really enjoy Flash. All right. There you go. 
Um, we'll answer anything. And let's see. Four new comments. Uh, oh, the moon. The moon, you're starting to... I don't know if you changed your name or you've been, you're a newer guy. I'm really becoming a fan of your comments. Now everyone will be like, you're fucking suck. I always love how I read. I give a compliment to a commenter before I read. Before... Before I read it, I, one day is going to come and be like, The Moon, I really appreciate your comments. They're really good. And then I'll be like, The Moon says, fuck off, Dave, and I hope you die. All right. I should read the comments before I give them compliments. All right. Uh, the Moon says, Ziggler could become a WWE main eventer by surgically removing his sense of humor and personality, growing six inches taller, become 10% more handsome, and lean, learning to be a corporate ball-sucking bitch. Yep. He seems to be starting to learn that ladder. Yeah. Ewok from Endor says Z Ziggler can be a main eventer, only if Ziggler is not Ziggler. Yep, yep. Fucking why be a good wrestler? Um, the Moon says a better question about TNA is whose talent have they ever made the absolute most out of? Regard regards making money and having great matches. The answer may be very well. The answer may very well be no one. Um, yeah. Yeah, poor TNA. Um, they just make a lot of mistakes. You know, they just make a lot of mistakes over and over and over. And I, I don't know, I'm rooting for Dixie, but it's like rooting for a dog that keeps running into the class door. You know, it's a cute dog. It's a lovable dog. He's nice. He sits. He gives you paw. But at the end of the day, that motherfucker would be running right into that glass window every fucking day. I'm talking about you, Fritz. I hope all dogs go to heaven because you were a great dog, but you were a dumb motherfucker. Like, it would be like the middle of the winter, and we'd just be like, and I grew up in New Jersey. We'd have to keep the glass door open because dumbass Fritz would go mock what, not even slow down. Like, hey, you know what? I'm fucking going around the curb. I'm fucking ducking through this door. I'm going to go 120 miles per hour. It was a black Labrador. Cutest fucking thing in the world. Dumb as shit. Every time. Like, you just, every time. You're like, all right, we're going to let Fritz out. Fritz is going to do his business. And like, oh, we got to keep the door open. And like, no, he's not that stupid. It's fucking freezing. It's New Jersey. It's negative fucking 1,200. Close the fucking door. All right, we'll close the door. Fritz will just fucking, you know, he won't run into it. And, like, I sat there, and I'm like, all right, I'm going to play my Game Boy or whatever, fucking read, read my book, whatever I was doing as a kid. And I'm like, all right, as soon as I see Fritz, I'm going to open a door so the house won't be freezing. And this motherfucker was the flash. He was like, woo, ba-boom, every time. And, you know, I still love Fritz. I still thought he was a great dog. But that motherfucker was never going to realize the glass door and him slamming his fucking head in. That love I have for Fritz is the same love I have for Dixie Carter. I mean, she's cute. She's lovable. She can sit. She can give you paw. She keeps trying. And just like Fritz, Dixie Carter's running full force steam ahead. And you're like, yeah, Dixie. I remember trying to leave the door open. We're trying. Come on, Dixie. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. Um, and it's just, being a TNA, I, I don't consider myself a TNA fan because there's so many diehards that just blindly follow the fucking product. I, I, I'm just being a TNA supporter from day one. I call myself a supporter because I, when the shit sucks, I call them out on it. I don't go, well, the fucking WWE is for kids. Don't do it. I, I'm not that guy. But at the same time, even though I love TNA, I know that dumbass fucking dog of a company is going to go mock one right into that class fucking door. Every time. Every time. Fritz, I love you. All right. Uh, Ewok from Ender says, I'm here. Caught you live. Hi, everyone. Lots of new guys. Names now. Great to see. Yeah, it's great. The internet infantry is growing. And we're starting to get... We're starting to get less and less views because YouTube is making us jump through hoops, but we're getting more and more subscribers and a better, better community. So I guess, you know, in the long run, it's pretty cool. Um, <laughs> the Moon says, thank you, Dave. You're a man of impeccable taste. You can't use the word impeccable when someone is punch drunk. That's just asking for trouble. I was nervous as shit, because like, I can read it. 
but you know, when you're punch drunk, you can read the word, but pronouncing the word as you read, hence why I don't work in news anymore, um, comes out hard. And when I saw Impeccable, I was like, this motherfucker knows. This motherfucker knows I'm punch drunk. He's like, hey, watch this. I'm going to use Impeccable. <laughs> so I love you, the moon. High five, pal. All right. I think that's it. Um, please like, comment, subscribe. We're trying to get more and more content. We're hoping to have a special Lucha Underground review show tomorrow. And, you know, if it's just me, eh, that's still special, right? Who's with me? Who's coming with me? Um, so please like, comment, subscribe as we're always trying to make the content. And right now at Coco Sports, we have a great plan. Rob is being trained. Rob is fucking going to go. We have a lot of great partners and geek essentials. We have a lot of guys that we have to train. So I believe... Um, I love our blog, but I believe it can be so much more. So hopefully, you know, we won't be Fritz running into a glass door. <laughs> I feel your pain, Dixie. I'm running for that door. I think it's open. It looks shiny. I can see my, I can see my goal. Boom. <laughs> I love that dog. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so like, comment, subscribe. Also check out the blog. We try to do at least one show a day, but we're also trying to expand on that. And we're trying to come up with more and more ideas. And um, we hear your complaints about the host. We're probably going to – I don't want to – I still want to help smaller YouTubers out. And I still want to work with my friends. But at the same time, I don't want you to be angry. And a lot of people are willing to pay money to kill some hosts, which, you know, I'm not in that business anymore. And some people are like, you know, three is the most. They're like, we subscribe to Coco Sports for Coco. And, you know, occasionally two other guys. But, um, you know, if it's fucking Coco and 97 fucking YouTubers, it's a bit much. And we hear your voices. We hear your voices. Hashtag, I hope we're not like WWE and full of shit and have nine soast. I know a lot of people want to try to get in on the Lucha Underground show tomorrow. So we'll probably start assigning people shows and um, making the channel go a little smoother. So thank you for the feedback. And as far as those who make fun of me because I mispronounce stuff, bro, I'm punch drunk. It's going to happen. I, you know, I can't fix that. You can't fix stupid. <laughs> anyway, this has been Stumped the Idiot, our pro wrestling Q&A. I am going to search for questions. Boom, boom. Jimmy King watching us live on Google+. Plus. Much love, Jimmy King. Jimmy King is such a big part of the internet imagery. He doesn't get many comments in, many questions in, but this son of a gun shares us. High five for you, Jimmy King. And by the way, still one of the best names in the game today. Ah, uh, boop, 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 doo, 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 doo. Facebook asking me. All right, well, I can, we'll answer it. Which one do you like better, pizza or hamburgers? Because all Americans are fat. Oh, this is for my Australian friend. Ah, uh, pizza. I'm a pizza guy. I mean, I love sandwiches, but I live in Japan, and the sandwiches are nothing compared to the New Jersey sandwiches. All right, let me refresh YouTube. Well, thank you for the six thumbs ups. Much love. Appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> the moon. Moon is the best comment to leave out on. I high five for you, brother. Apologies, Dave. You're a man of very fine taste. Thank you. That's what I'm talking about. Now, that a punch-drunk guy can get through that sentence. Thank you, the moon. All right. Thank you, Internet Imagery. Much love. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. We hope to keep improving the channel. And also, check out our blog. We, keep, we hope to keep improving that. And we're hoping to build the community more and more. All right. So, thank you. And with that, I am over. Bum, 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 bum.